many times have you seen early boating fishing season? Sitting alongside the road, there's a boat. You wonder, what is a boat doing sitting there? And you see it all the time. And you see a wheel is askew or no wheel at all. And you're thinking, why is that boat sitting there full of probably fishing poles, fishing tackle, stuff that people don't want people to bother? Most of the time, uh, when you see the boat pulled over on the side of the road, you've either got a flat tire or you've got a bearing failure. And somebody uh, had to take off and leave. Show people what they can do to prevent that boat sitting on the side of the road. I've got to elevate it off the floor with jack stands, and that's just a safety issue, and that's, that's your first precaution you, uh, you want to take. Remove the dust cover, twist your screwdriver, comes off. Inside this container, I've got a little bit of gasoline, which I use for solvent, breaks grease down, cleans up real easy. And that's what we're going to do on everything in here. We're going to take it out, we're going to soak it, clean it, and if it's in good shape, we'll put it back in. Just brush this outside off so you can see what you're dealing with. Let's see, we have a, uh, a little cotter pin and a castellated nut. First thing we want to do is straighten out this cotter pin so we can get it out of there. Next thing we want to do is just go ahead and remove this castellated nut. They can be anywhere from finger snug to just a very light amount of pressure from a, um, a wrench or a set of channel locks. At this point, you're, uh, this, this wheel and tire assembly is, is loose and you can simply slide it off. The outer bearing is encapsulated in here, also it's loose. And a lot of times, when you, as soon as you pull that off, if you don't have a good covering over this with your hand, that bearing's gonna fall out. So most times, I'll just set a clean napkin, something to the shop towel there on the floor in case I lose that. Grit, grime, moisture in your bearings, that's what's gonna cause you failure. So whatever I can do to keep dirt out of them is that much better, uh, I'm gonna be in the long run. comes out in your hand. First thing you'll notice here, there's a problem. This, uh, this grease has got a, a whitish, reddish color to it. It's an indicator to me of two big problems. Number one, we've gotten a little bit of moisture in there, causing the whiter appearance, and that uh, obviously that red is coming from rust. Lay the tire down, using a hammer, remove the seal. Seal is out, and uh, like I said, you can tell it's got uh, rust and moisture in it. We don't keep that. Finally, you got your inner bearing. It's now loose just like your outer and you can tell it's got the same rust and moisture situation on it. This one's also going to need at least a good cleanup. The only thing left inside here now are the two races, the journal surfaces for the bearings, and, uh, and the old grease. And we want to we get that old grease out of there. And since we've got rust, we may be taking the races out as well. So what I'm going to do is just build up shop towels and push through there and push that remaining bulk of grease out at one time. And I put a, a trash can underneath this, makes cleanup a whole lot easier. Yeah, Here Now that this uh, gasoline has had a little time to dissolve this grease, just take some shop towels and wipe it down. This will let us get a, an inspection on these bearings and see what kind of condition they are in. And uh, uh, obviously the reason for that is if they're in good shape, we can, we can reuse bearings. We're seeing some rust on this outer edge of the, uh, of the uh, cage assembly. Uh, most of the rollers have got some discoloration, uh, a bluish to gray. That's a good indication that these rollers have actually gotten hot. The metal has fatigued a little bit. And um, as cheap as a set of bearings are, I'm not taking a chance with those. We're gonna kick those out. Now we can see the races in there. That's what the bearings fit into. That's right, that's the, uh, the journal surface that they ride on, and when one wears, the other typically wears with it. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! Pretty simple, and it just falls through, uh, on through again. We're not gonna keep these right into the trash can. Taking the guts out, you've taken the races, you've taken the uh, bearings themselves, and you have taken the grease out, the seal out. Now we got a bare deal here. Now all you're gonna do is start Fill it all back, back together. Out. Let's see what we're going to do here. Okay. Point. These things have really got to stay clean and in good shape. Any grit, dirt from the shop, floor, anything like that can really cause a lot of wear problems. So I'm going to work with a race first. I'm going to put the bearing back in here and keep it in good shape. So your hammer bounce back is. and you notice that audible difference in town. Mm -hmm. It bounces back. And I'll give it one more tap just to make sure. Next thing I'm going to do is just flip it and drive the other one in. I would use a, 
a low to medium viscosity, high temperature grease. Uh, in this case, a lot of people call it the red grease. Uh, it's also made for uh, disc brake wheel bearings. You get a pretty good uh, glob on the palm of your hand. Mm. Turn your bearing with the wide side down and you'll just press it against the palm of your hand, forcing grease into that groove. And uh, you'll continue that until you see little bubbles of grease appearing at this upper ring right here. And once you see that, just rotate it and continue that all the way around your bearing. Really apply a lot of grease to the outside. You can't really overdo the grease on this. And um, I'll take a good, good size handful of grease and just set it inside that axle. And more than that, you really want to fill about half of that hub with grease. Put the inner bearing in and just press it with your fingers till you feel it seal. Put the seal in. Take your towel and just kind of clean the outside of it off. I like to feel it with my finger, make sure I've got a good flush seat all the way around. We're just about ready to put this on the trailer. Next thing I'm going to do is just get a little bit of grease in the palm of my glove and just, just cover that shaft with it pretty good. Lift it on and give it a little push. And you want to slide it in carefully so that you're not scratching and gouging anything as you put it in. And this is what we want to see. Grease comes out. It's a good indication we're pushing air out. Uh, put your flat washer against the outer bearing. Put your castellated nut on. Give it one more little tightening. Make sure that's good and tight. We've, now we have uh, we preloaded those races and bearings. And now I'm going to back off a little bit till the cotter pin lines up and I've got good smooth rotation in this hub. And uh, again, this cotter pin will just simply keep this large nut from backing off. The best way to keep moisture out is keeping all the air voids full of grease. If it's full, water can't get in. Uh, and, and what I like to use to do that, one of the first things I'll do is replace these with a, uh, a spring-loaded, um, essentially it's called a bearing buddy. And these um, apply grease to uh, the bearing itself. As the bearing warms up, as this grease starts to flow and liquefy a little bit, it's going to go places. Well, if you these maintain a reservoir of grease inside of them under spring pressure, and as that uh, grease begins to liquefy, that spring will push the fresh grease into the bearing as the air goes out the back. And uh, you can simply take your thumb, and when that'll rock side to side a little bit, you know you've got it. You've got it as much as you need in there. Every trip before I hit the road, I pull this cover off. If I've got spring pressure on here, if I can move that a little bit with my thumb, I've got plenty of grease in there, and I know my bearing's in pretty good shape. How long would it take you to do, do one side? Do one side easily in, uh, in an hour, um, to have your materials ready. Yeah. Now, so, that, so one hour of work may prevent two or three days of going to get your boat, get, taking it somewhere and getting it fixed. You may have to replace a spindle. You may have all kinds of problems. So one hour of work, and a minimal amount of money uh, to get this thing going. You replaced your dust cap with, it, with a bearing buddy. I think that's a great idea because visually you know where your grease is. Thank you very much, man.